Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar on Nothing Mental about mental well-being, practical results for small teams. If you're watching this after the 20th of October, this is a shorter recording. I will be very frank about that. And we are going to see the following things in our talk today. First of all, this is not about sales. So we are not going to have any sales related talk. We will be sharing a link where you can book some time with me if you want to speak with me. What are we, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the relationship between psychology and business, a little bit into distraction anxiety cycle. Start with the results. Goodbye to work stress, uh, is it? Will I be happy? Let's see. Uh, not good mental well-being. How does it look like? See, so. I did mention distraction anxiety cycle before. Existing solutions, remote work, and how can this be a diminishing problem? What is my story? Why do I come from the entrepreneur slash investor background? And uh, why am I talking about uh, mental well-being? Difference between well-being, therapy, illness. Reasons why we slip. We all are smart people. We know all the solutions. A lot of solutions are available everywhere these days. We still keep slipping. And I'll, I'll share a framework that I have named it as a simple expanding vocabulary. We'll try to understand how do we explain things in a different way, a different word. What does it mean? Um, you might have some surprises coming here when you see the kind of words that can be uh, used to explain simple emotions. Going to the right side of emotion. There is a pun intended here. What is the right side? Catching ourselves, aiming for the green zone. SOS, my stress OS plan at work. CBT, what is that? And ABC, I'll share a little bit on that. I've actually changed uh, some of the wording of CBT to match something that actually works in workplace. And you will see very simple signposting support that works. Five things that you can do today. And uh, gee, what about the bigger issues? Are you going to talk about panic, um, bipolar situations and so forth? We will see. And uh, ultimately the next steps. Let's get started. Will I be happy at work after watching this webinar, after going through the workshops that he does and so forth? Life is about ups and downs. If you do not know when things are stressful, you won't know when things are not stressful. It is a loop. So is this an elongated way to say that, no, <laughs> this is not going to give me happiness? Well, you are going to be happy you are going to get the tools, the framework, some of the things that will help you surf these waves, irrespective of how the waves are going to be at work and even in your personal life as well. A lot of our work stress is actually something that is happening in the rest of the world or rest of my life and so forth. We may or may not have any influence on these. However, after going through these kind of steps, we are going to definitely come out of this and have fun while doing that. And that is my promise to you. So is this a formula to get happiness at work? You get the answer. This is going to help you ride the waves in a fun way. Ground level start. Everyone is mental in their own way. This is what we are trying to establish here. It's not... It's not about uh, having good health without, uh, let me rephrase this. When we hear the word mental, especially in the UK, there is a certain taboo attached to it. There is a certain meaning attached to it. It directly refers to craziness. And I want to start at ground level saying that we all are crazy in some way. We all, all have our nuances. We all have our behaviors and so forth. Everyone is mental in their own way. There is no health without mental health. And lastly, nothing mental about mental health. It is high time that we start talking about these topics very openly. There is no shame in it. There is no hesitation in it. And the more we start talking about it, the more it will become easier to understand 
how to get over it how to overcome it and how to go to a better state of mind especially at workplaces now you might say there are psychologists who are there there are therapists counselors and so forth and my company is giving me access to a variety of resources as well now with huge respect depending on the company size depending on the culture depending on the country depending on the stage at which the business has is at not all psychologists would understand the nuances of an entrepreneur of a small team of an executive in a corporate of an hr person who is trying to manage uh, things during economic crisis and so forth people coming in people going out and so forth they definitely help but there is something else that is there with work and business and they are very very specific what i one of the things i say is that all my life i've worked with uh, engineering finance business investment and so forth so psychology is not something that i have been practicing for two to three decades or something of that kind but at the back of it since, since more than a decade i've started using psychology at work and i got myself certified i got myself educated on this initially to start helping with my own issues i'll tell you my story in a minute however i found that bringing specific aspects of business to psychology and specific aspects of psychology to business actually bridges the gap and this is where we really need to understand that there is a special relationship where we don't need jargons we need actionable steps we need a tool like the way you have tools in business you you need a tool where you can take it simplify it and start using it at work okay let's start with uh, results of good mental well-being first of all thank you for those who have shared uh, uh, anonymous questions before in fact in the live webinar we had up to 43 attendees and uh, before uh, about 80 plus questions were submitted and some testimonials came in from the last uh, decade i have been doing this since a while what does good mental well-being look like okay 9x roi as per some formal studies that have been done 9x and this is not me saying about my work or something this this is what is being seen in the industry up to 9x i would say the reason being when your mind is clear any investment that you have done into marketing campaigns into executive coaching into accounting tools and so forth everything works better your team works better productivity increases you start removing the number one cause of absence in the uk and us when somebody comes in and says today i'm not i'm, I'm having a headache or i i'm not feeling well or with my tummy is not fine yesterday was not great or something if they have a mental well-being issue if they are feeling down for some reason some kind of general anxiety is there they don't come and say that i have anxiety and i'm not coming back that is one of the main reasons and they say something else i have done that you have done that productivity absenteeism and mutual loyalty in the company increases happier customers customers are the one who are paying for the business happier customers and happier employees and happier company why am i not using any stats in this slide if you just google around you will find hundreds of stats stats that will show you that everything goes in the upward direction when mental well-being is fine in a company if you start comparing your company with another company your team with another team you will see wherever the mindset is clear the emotion regulation is there people understand crisis and navigate around it they come out very strong and every statistic shows this that there is an upward improvement you will not find a statistic where they say that we managed to increase improve mental well-being in our company and uh, revenue went down and absenteeism increased and so forth if that is happening then you may be confusing mental well-being with something else in fact we'll see ab about the uh, existing solutions where people get vacations and uh, uh, and parties and so forth or some coupons and so forth and are they really working or are they not working we'll see about that sometimes you think that you are 
helping someone by giving them a vacation away. It works in the first time, second time, but if things have not improved, then there is something else to be fixed over here. Good mental well-being always improves the revenue. Now, some words from the audience in the last decade. I mean, I, I keep working with small companies and this one came uh, from the CEO of a 12-person company. Speaking about mental well-being was the best thing I did. There's a taboo with the word mental. We got to get over it. My revenues, relationship, life balance all improved. I knew the solutions and yet I still slipped. Now I know how to catch myself and turn to the right side. I'll show you what he means by the right side. and I'll show you the matrix as well. A question from the audience came was, how do I know that my team member is not taking mental health solution, uh, situations? And uh, we'll come to that. We'll try to answer that question towards that as well. In fact, one of the shortest answer is, you cannot fake it for too long. Not good mental well-being. Speaking of faking mental well-being, what does not good mental well-being stand, uh, look like? This is a formal study. This is a screenshot taken from the web. Four in five small business owners tell us, and this, this study has been done by IOCA and Mental Health UK, that they're experiencing poor mental health. And this is shocking. They don't tell uh, publicly but four in five small business owners. That's a huge number. Now, before we go into distraction anxiety cycle, I would like to come, come here into how the non, not good mental well-being look like. Now, that is in a moment here. It looks overwhelming. Everything is a priority. You don't know which one to pick up. Now, this is real words from one of uh, my uh, audience questions, and, and, and especially uh, this person actually has shared quite well. I wanted to shout. No one there. No one was there to listen. And we all paused to listen when this person was speaking. When the, we are not feeling well, you feel like sharing, but... You don't know. Will I be judged? Will I be shouted at? Will I be considered inefficient? We'll see through the myths about it. It feels crazy, panicking, overwhelming, tiring, frustrating, uncertain. You are doing the right things, but you really don't know what's going on, what should be the next step, and if these things are going to create the kind of solutions that you are looking for, kind of results that you're looking for. I did skip a couple of slides, so I'll go back to the slides that I wanted to show. Now, at work, one of the things where poor mental well-being comes in is distraction anxiety cycle. We feel anxious. Now, depending on the culture of the company, depending on the habit, industry, and, and so forth, you may have meetings, uh, you may go to uh, go for a team uh, outing together, you might go for a smoke or drink or something of that kind. People keep watching something, somebody watches sports, somebody watch it, watches Netflix or something. They are trying to avoid whatever is giving that anxiety, even at a general stage. And we feel better momentarily. We get distracted. After some time, the work is still not done. It creates more anxiety. Oh my gosh, I did not do it. I have something coming up. There is a deadline. People call it stress, but beyond a point, you actually start feeling it in your body. You, you can feel it in your hands. You can feel it in your digestion. You can feel it in your sleep patterns and so forth. That is where it is slowly crossing over towards anxiety. It is no more just stress. It is no more something that goes on with substance abuse or goes away with substance abuse or net watch watching Netflix or something of that kind. It's becoming a bigger problem. And that cycle carries on. And this is a vicious cycle which worsens things, which is why I mentioned that this is a problem at workplace. Does it happen at, at home as well? Definitely, yes. Right now we're talking about workplace, but yeah, Work is one of the biggest distraction to personal life stress as well. Work is a place where we spend huge amount of time, especially now post-COVID, before COVID. During COVID, we were 
a bit more lonely with all these Zoom calls and so forth. However, the cycle continues and it works since unless you interrupt it, we'll see how to interrupt it. How do we spot this science? Uncharacteristic behavior that you see in uh, team members. This person has never done this kind of thing, but no, not picking up the phone or not replying to things on time, but then all, all of a sudden replying uh, to things on time, things in time. Uh, and this is not uh, something that they do. Low levels of engagement. I mean, initially everybody says yes to a certain plan and then suddenly things are slowing down. Productivity goes down, personally changes in sleeping and eating behaviors. And uh, this directly relates to eating disorders or sleeping disorders as well. You may not see the uh, sleeping patterns or eating pa patterns outside of work because you may not know what they are doing outside of work, but you see the results at work in their work and productivity and, and so forth. Disinterest in work or day-to-day -day, uh, activities where words could be used where they don't feel hopeful. Increased absence, many a times without reason, many a times giving reason where you cannot argue. As an example, uh, uh, they give exam they give a, a reason where somebody had a urgent situation, an accident or something related to childcare and so forth. And we may not be able to argue back and we may not be able to double check whether it is true or not true. And we go with trust for sure. But this becomes a big pattern. Changes in working patterns. Withdrawal from social situation, even if you have a get together, even a get together to talk about mental well-being as well, people feel shy about it unless we open up and we'll see how to open up in a moment. But even these things, uh, found, many managers and founders, they feel I, I'll give a solution. People will take it and things will be fixed. If somebody is going through mental well-being issues, anxiety and so forth, it may not work that way. Even if you have a, a seminar going on on mental well-being and everybody is going over there, this one person might not show up. And, and this one person might not show up for a drink in the pub or going for a bowling or something of that kind or doing some team activities or something. Uh, you start seeing these kind of patterns. Irrational fears, paranoia, anxiety. Many people stop looking at the news these days because even the slightest of issues is actually taking them to a very unsafe place in their mind. And they might catastrophize, they might generalize, they might have some kind of bias around it. And uh, it may not be true, and it may be true, but the anxiety that comes, the feeling of panic that comes definitely is true. And they are feeling it. And then you can actually spot it in somebody's way of speaking, way of talking. Uh, the, and Many times, even if they may not share that they are feeling anxious about it, they might focus on one of the most negative news of the day for ir irrationally long time and so forth, and you can start spotting. There is a pattern coming up. And definitely substance use, misuse could be uh, uh, something to, to spot here as well. We did look at not, well, not good mental well-being over here. What do people do in these kind of situations? Now, larger companies definitely have a lot of uh, resources where they can uh, guide people to therapists, counselors, and so forth. Again, uh, this has to be done in a very confidential way so that people feel safe about it. Just having the solution doesn't work. Away days, vacation days, and so forth <laughs> definitely work. They work on a short term. People have given me feedback. I felt all the more lonelier after taking a day off. And how many days off can I take? It, it starts showing a pattern. It also costs money at times. And if people stay at home, they keep either eating or watching a Netflix or uh, just taking rest or sleeping and so forth. It's not helping them. It might be helping the company for one day that this person is away, but we haven't solved the issue. We haven't addressed it. We haven't provided any support. Uh, and hence, uh, they may not work in the long run. Many of these don't really want nor need therapy sessions. And to the point they go towards wanting it or needing it, 
the waiting list is quite long, especially with NHS and, and so forth, and they're dealing with even more serious issues as well. But we really don't want to wait until that situation, okay? We have to address this at a very early stage, at a stage where it becomes easy to address, at, at, this, at a stage where it is like something that not just the employees can drive themselves, the company can do something about it. Because beyond a point, they have to go to the GP. They have to go take even further up as well. Remote work has not been helping as much. Uh, the amount of influence people can have through remote work is different. People have to use different techniques just to uh, manage their teams. There, there are workshops on how to manage your rem remote team, how to address, uh, you know, how to address deliverables. Uh, however, there is a there is something behind the screen, behind the virtual uh, screen, behind when, when we shut down this laptop and so forth. There is something that goes on. People keep working either really too long, sometimes too short. Sometimes you really don't connect on what is happening. Now, you might say that this is one of the most cost-effective ways, efficient ways. I'm able to spend time with my family. I don't need to travel in the train and so forth. Those are the benefits of it, and I'm definitely up for it, and I really support it. However, if somebody is feeling down, and we are uh, giving them remote work for too long, it doesn't help them, is what I'm trying to say. Remote work, non-remote work, in-person work, we have to have a mix of it. However, if there is remote work for too long and somebody is feeling lonely, it's not helping them. A diminishing problem. And this again comes from one of my um, actual clients. He he mentioned, and uh, I I'm, I'm uh, clearly saying in this case he, uh, because with huge respect, a, a, a lot of the bigger problems are with men, but they don't talk about it. And um, women are actually smarter and also share a bit more. I'm not saying that this is specific to men and women and so forth. However there is a difference in how much people share. But once we, we start sharing, talking about it without the fear of being judged, we start creating perspectives. And we have some kind of a framework to follow how to process it become, before it becomes an issue. And hence it becomes a diminishing problem. In my head, in your head, and someone said it might look like a huge issue once we start talking about it without the fear of being judged. You start feeling making it small. The, I did not mention minimizing the problem, it's a diminishing problem. Minimizing the problem is a sign of disrespect where people say, I will go to the myths over there. Oh, this is not a problem. Pull your socks up and move on. That's minimizing. This is a diminishing problem when we start sharing. What's my story? Like I mentioned, since the last 22 years, I have worked in engineering, finance, automotive emissions, and, and so forth. And uh, you can see a bunch of logos and so forth. As far as my professional journey is concerned, I've invested in startups. I've done good investment, not so good investments, and so forth. However, I see it as life events working in 10 different countries, moving around, going to new cultures, working in places where I, I, I've been challenged as well. But in personal life, I faced bereavement. And uh, this entire journey started 12 years ago when I lost my dad suddenly. And uh, life moved on. I, uh, I had a kid. I, I had a great role uh, all across Europe. And... Uh, I was burning out and the doctors tested me saying that physically you're fine. I used to run marathons and they asked me to talk to somebody. I had never heard of something called bereavement counseling and it's changed my life. The burnout went off. I started discovering some new things about my own life. I did go through childhood, childhood abuse and trauma and I will explain this in a different call but it had huge impact on my decision-making and, and uh, on my uh, happiness in life, on the way I process relationships and trust. 
like I mentioned, I did some business in the past. I, I have invested. I have been an entrepreneur and so forth. Where loss of money is a part of life. And lack of timely support. And when you're leading a company, when you're leading a family, when you're leading a team, you are in a different role. And uh, the kind of support that you're expecting or getting are different. Now, while this was going on, COVID was coming. During COVID lockdowns, people were not able to meet. And I was talking to a number of my friends, just saying hello. And some of these hellos became 40-minute calls, 45-minute calls or something like that. And in my head, because I had studied psychology after doing the bereavement counseling, after going through burnout, etc., I was studying it for myself. I never thought that this will be coming up as a workshop or something. I was using some framework through CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and it started helping my friends, other business owners and so forth. And they said, I have a two-people team. I have a three-person team. Would you like to speak for half an hour? And this is how it all started. And if I win the lottery and I don't have to work, I'll still carry this mental well-being workshops all my life because I see the impact. I see the energy that comes in. I see the changes that, are, that have happened in so many people that I've spoken with. Entrepreneurs have spoken to me. And then after working with me for three months and totally changing their business, they say, would you like to talk to my business partner? Would you like to talk to my life partner? Because I think they, they might benefit from it. And we just start with talks. That's my story. It has produced results. And this is why I'm sharing this with you. Difference between well-being, therapy, illness. I compare it with COVID. Now, COVID is, let's say, the worst kind of flu. It, it, it could be fatal and, and so forth. But well-being is something like you trying to keep fit, doing the right kind of food, right kind of exercise, right kind of sleep and so forth so that your immunity is high and you may not get sick. And you're trying to do this even before. Okay, if there is something else happens, what can you do? Could you, could you wash your hands? Could you start taking some uh, medicines? Could you start taking some vaccines, etc.? There we have slowly gone towards the prescriptive side of things where it goes towards therapy. And illness is when you are suffering and something really, really need to be done. Now, this is why we speak at the beginning stage because in life, we have a mix of all of it as far as mental well-being is concerned. There is no specific time that today I'm not feeling this way, tomorrow I'm feeling this and so forth. It varies. So you take it take the preventive side of things, take the framework that comes with it and say, okay, what could I do today? Why am I feeling like this today? Even before going to uh, a prescriptive uh, solution, that is what I distinguish between well-being, therapy and illness. Um, too simple an answer? In real life, it is a simple answer. If you really want to debate about the technical differences over here, we could be talking for ages. It's not going to help understand and feel better about our own well-being myths about well-being at workplace people with mental well-being mental illnesses are violent dangerous crazy unpredictable this is what they show in movies well is it true in real life beyond a point definitely yes but majority of the time it's not true People with anxiety are not reliable. Mental illnesses are caused by weakness and lazy people and so forth. People should snap out of it. Nothing could be far from truth. This does not affect everybody. All of us have some issues. Now, they can be very mild. They can be very uh, grave or something. But life is like a wave. Some days are good. Some days are not good. Even Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk has some good days, not so good days. I mean... Every one of us, if you are a parent, you have good days, bad days. If you are a, if you are not a parent, you have good days, bad days, if you have, and so forth. So all, all sorts of situations. If you are young, many people think that it doesn't affect the youngsters and only affect old people or it doesn't affect wise people and only affects the youngsters who don't have direction in life. No, it affects everybody. It's not a personality weakness or character flaw. People think about it. I mean, 
Uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I can't do anything for a person with mental health problem. Just by attending this workshop, just by being with someone, just by saying there, you can do things. What you are actually saying in this kind of situation is, I don't know whatever I do is going to help that person or not. Is it going to worsen it? Am I using the right words? Our own fears start coming in. Is this the right way to deal with somebody? Should they talk to a professional? Just be with your colleague. Just be with yourself. Just be with your friends. That's the starting step of helping someone with a mental health problem. Because maybe it has not yet become a problem. Prevention doesn't work. It is impossible to prevent mental illnesses. Definitely works. And it has been proven scientifically. Are these the only myth, myths about uh, mental well-being at workplace? No, there are hundreds of others. But these are the main ones. We can start with some and you can actually distinguish which one is a myth and which one is not. I'll show you how. Now, why do we keep sleeping? You have heard all these kind of solutions in many places. I mean, if you just go on YouTube, you can find thousands of hours of videos on these kind of things. There are so many psychologists talking about it. And especially if you're a small business owner, you would try to solve it yourself by taking it. Uh, okay, I, I took this course, I took this YouTube video and so forth. Let me make a framework for myself. We keep slipping because there is one thing missing. And I, I put well-being in a simple framework. And you will see S here, I, I say that stands for social well-being. I is individual well-being. M is monetary well-being, financial well-being, okay? Money means a lot and a lot different things to different people. P, physical well-being. L, love life, relationship, okay? This is completely different from social, completely different from family. There is a completely different bond, completely different longing that is there. And in the center is our emotion, emotional well-being, emotional regulation. And if our emotional regulation is not working fine even if we have social well-being individual well-being great finance great physic great relationship or so forth one or two missing here doesn't matter but we keep on sleeping it's like going one step ahead and two step back and this is why we keep sleeping we go into detail in other videos of, of course but if you really want to know even if you know the solution why did it not work it's something to do with emotional regulation a few more words. We have limited vocabulary for mental well-being. I do not know there are 100 plus words to describe five to six feelings. When we use them, perspective sets in. Try and see for yourself. And this is from a VP of a marketing, oh, a ma a VP of marketing. This lady, she, she knows a lot of words and a lot of ways to express herself. But when it came to emotions and mental well-being, there are only four or five words that we normally use. Either you're feeling angry or sad or frustrated or something of that kind. And many a times we use so-called negative words to ex explain it. There are 100 plus words to explain how things are. And I'll show you. There was a question, do surveys ever work about mental well-being? <laughs> Don't people lie? Yes, they do. Surveys may not work to the extent they work in uh, any other, uh, other field. People put down answers what they want their company to hear. There are different ways to do it. There are different settings to do it and so forth. But yeah, let us look at some more vocabulary in here. And let us start with the, the, the limited vocabulary that we use. We feel bad. We feel fearful, angry, disgusted, happy or surprised. You see only one of this is a purely so-called positive emotion, a happy one. However, I don't call the rest of them as negative emotions. They are actually protective emotions. Now, this could be the limited vocabulary that we use. But if we expand this a little bit more. When you're feeling bad, maybe you're just feeling tired, bored. When you're feeling fearful, you might be feeling insecure or rejected or threatened. Now, when I say you might just be feeling this, it's not about minimizing it. It's about putting a perspective. Am I being threatened by something that is working, uh, happening at work or someone else? Um, 
Am I feeling angry because I felt let down by someone or myself? Am I being too critical? You see, the anger part has been actually expanded to one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different ways of expressing it. When you're happy, are you feeling proud? Are you feeling accepted? Are you feeling peaceful? There are different ways to do that. This does not stop here. Look at what happens next. When you're feeling scared, when you're feeling fearful and scared, is it because of helplessness? When you're feeling surprised, is it because you're energetic and excited or is it because you're feeling shocked? When you're feeling angry at someone or something or yourself, is it because somebody uh, was very dismissive of you, very critical of you? Or you're feeling the feeling of jealousy, is, is it that? Or maybe there was something happened, you're feeling violated, feeling disrespected. And you see, instead of bunching it into certain uh, words, we have started expanding our vocabulary. So what does it mean going to the right side? The so-called negative emotion, and I call them protective emotions, anger, fear, panic, and we saw that we can explain it in many more ways. Anger could be going uh, as being annoyed, being fed up. Panic is probably feeling disoriented and so forth. Fear could be, let's say you're feeling timid or nervous or something. They're protecting you from going down, feeling weak or being exploited or feeling bad about your own self. And they give you a false sense of control, a false sense of confidence. If I be frustrated about it, people will listen to me. If I, if I be very horrified about it, something is going to change. Does not always help, but we'll see what to go. We're slowly moving to the right side. In the right side, I understand I've used smaller forms and purpose over here. We explain this more in detail in our workshops. Just to the next right, I have put sadness, physical fatigue, and creativity, etc., engagement. And I've shaded this in a different way because those are the ones very specific to workplace. Now, when you're feeling sad, you could be feeling disappointed, distressed, miserable or something. Slowly move towards the physical side of things. Maybe I'm feeling thirsty. I'm feeling hungry. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling insecure, discouraged and so forth. And a bit more to the right side, I slowly feel curious. How am I going to the right side? We will see. Maybe I'm feeling productive, eager, bold, fascinated. This is where we want to stay at workplace. Okay, But beyond this, there is a further set of feelings to the right side. Connective emotion. They can be at workplace and they also come a lot more just because we exist as humans. Humans have to connect to each other. So on the very rightmost side personal and intimate connections flirting cuddly aroused simulated hot passionate and so forth come a little to the left you are feeling cheerful comical happy optimistic playful caring helpful secure you see from the very very connected emotions on the rightmost side from the very intimate side you slowly go towards a bit more open side you go a bit more towards the caring side and this is where the workplace comes in, where you feel curious, motivated, simulated. And if we are not careful enough, we might feel thirsty, hungry, if I've not eaten for a while or something, feel sad, depending on how my mind has processed emotions, etc. And if these kind of things keep, we keep on going to the left and left and left, we might feel panicking, we might feel trapped, lost, frightened and hence angry and so forth. And we have to keep coming to the right side, especially here for the workplace and further right in our individual lives. How do we do that? We have to understand why we are there and what is happening. Now CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, they actually mention that the way something happens in life is because of A, B, and C. An activating event interacts with your belief system and gives you a con uh, consequence. The same event can have different consequence with different people. So if somebody 
has inserted me at work, activating event, inserted the entire team, my belief system is different and my colleague's belief system is different, the consequential well-being of my mind, my output and so forth will be different because of like I might feel disrespected, my colleague might feel encouraged and so forth. Now I'm changing this to instead of activating event belief system and consequence, let's change it to attitude, behavior and consistency. How are we going to look at these kind of emotions that we are, look, uh, we are feeling here? because of our attitude how can we catch ourselves and go towards the right over here that defines our next behavior the response of it and can we do it consistently and this is where the smile comes in as you go to the right side you have to start catching yourself in these emotions even the good ones because when you know which are the good ones then you remember that memory and stay over there. If you know this kind of activity is making me feel connected, cared, playful, engaged and so forth. So the next time you feel lost, what can you do in order to come to a playful state or caring state or, state or motivated state? Let's see about that. And this is where we understand that catching ourselves is key. My stress OS plan. <laughs> old way to new way as you start thinking about catching yourself i will try to make it a bit simpler you don't have to walk around all day thinking what emotion am i in oh my gosh there are hundreds of things to do i only had five things to think about now i have 100 things to think about no that's not how it works i have divided this into four zones blue zone yellow zone red zone and green zone in the green zone i say this is all about feeling calm, happy, ready, so-called being okay. When you are feeling down, when you are feeling tired, lost, trapped and so forth, you are in blue zone, take rest. Refresh your body, refresh your mind, refresh your intellect. Take a break if that helps. Too long, too long of a break may not help you, but keep taking break. Slowing down definitely helps. That is when you are in yellow zone. You are not really down, but you would definitely benefit by slowing down, taking a step back, taking a note of, okay, where am I? Why am I feeling trapped? Why am I feeling uh, disengaged? Is it really a panic kind of situation or I can do something about it? The moment you slow down, physically, mentally, intellectually, you are again going to green zone. Red zone mad angry yelling abuse and so forth stop this is not good for you it's not good for others it's not good for anyone you got to stop now you see it doesn't follow a loop or a cycle that you have to go from red to yellow to blue and to green from any zone you can come to the green zone and you have to start understanding which activities are going to give me a way to come to green zone and come to the right side of emotions. This activity will be very specific to your business, your work, your culture, and what kind of work you do. People, some, some of us get great excitement from uh, doing spreadsheet work. Others really, really would get frustrated with spreadsheet work. Some of us go and do some artwork, others may not. In fact, just going and doing a small thing that really engages you already has started giving you the right chemicals in the mind to feel good and you use that to bring your mind out of the frustration from the left side start engaging and you come to the right side we do workshops where we put a whiteboard and we do brainstorms and we list down what in my team are the list of things that can be taken as a side job it's a small thing that actually helps lubricate the rest of the jobs that are happening but it makes you feel engaged, makes you feel creative, and so forth. This is important for business owners. Better mental well-being makes you feel safe. Just like first aid, just like having a good place to be, just like having the right kind of temperature and all those things. Mentally, you're feeling well, feeling safe. That leads to clearer decision, faster decision, confident decisions. Leads to amazing productivity, 
which is in very important for the individual as well as the company if the company is not going to survive the individual is going to suffer if the individual is not going to survive the company is going to suffer and these are the list of emotions that we are trying to create in fact you could add to it you could delete some of these emotions because you have to make it specific to your own work we have some digital tools uh, some paper based tools that come in as well where we understand what is the pulse of the uh, company what is the pulse of the individual and so forth uh, like i mentioned this is not a sales call and we really don't want to go deeper into it but there is one sentence which is key the simpler the tool is the more powerful it is it's not about how genius the tool is it's about how you use the tool consistently signposting support that works do's and don't policy framework work workplace we give that uh, in our workshops we create that one, one set is the generic set of things that you can uh, even find with a simple google search but some of the about 40 40 to 50 percent of the things are very specific to which sector you are in which country you are in what kind what kind of team you have how what's the size of the uh, team and so forth what words to use when you're talking in groups what you, could you put an act of acts of kindness charts for teams that is there physically there where you do some simple things just bringing a coffee to somebody just uh, holding the door to somebody are we forgetting to note them is it too small of a thing oh he is supposed to hold the door for me that was not an act of kindness he better hold the door for me that's not how it works <laughs> when you start observing these kind of things you start making this one of the uh, few, few tools that we have we have a list of paper based and online tools that actually help go towards this support framework of course it comes with a lot of learning opportunities part of the learning are recorded or slash um, standard rest of the running uh, learning are very specific uh, to the I mean, you will be very surprised to see that at so much so much amount of information just within your team from whatever has happened in the last 12 months 18 months and so forth that can help you uh, improve in the company many companies have employee assistant programs we help create them as well mental health first aiders there are various programs available outside list of free resources organization phone numbers could you just reach out to somebody confidentially and uh, your team member may not actually say it but they are going to note that number just in case either they or their family member or somebody is going to uh, use it and it's extremely useful at the end of it definitely referral to gp if required like i mentioned we work on the preventive side of things but when it is the time we you definitely have to take professional help prescriptive help for sure we do have resources for that at the same time there is no hesitation in taking the right solution no shame no taboo five things to do at the workplace and if you are expecting some uh, extremely artificial intelligence based machine learning based uh, powerful tools or something of that kind sorry to disappoint but these are very simple tools the tools behind it could be implemented in many ways but it starts with talking often about mental well-being you have to talk openly many a times people have a little room where they can go and talk confidentially doesn't help even people are feeling conscious of even going to that room i don't want to be seen by my colleagues to go to that room to talk to my manager maybe i'm being told off how many times have i gone this month talk openly in a in a coffee place in a, in a meeting like this or in a in a breakfast session or a lunch session or something of that kind tune differently you saw hundreds of words can be used increase your vocabulary as an organization make some game out of it if people are using new vocabularies and so forth then give them points and somebody wins something at the end of the week or end of the month turn right that refers to the matrix emotions matrix so from the protective side of things to the connective side of things is the smile working okay and because of the specific nature of your company specific nature of your culture the kind of team we have and so forth the situation you are test everything try things measure them 
whether using paper-based tools, online tools, some of the tools that we have, doesn't matter. You've got to measure it, tweak it, and keep on improving it. This one did not work to that extent. Why don't we try it this way? And so forth. As we start doing it, it becomes a game. It becomes really, really helpful. It becomes a very, very positive thing. These are the kind of spreadsheets that you could create or white on the whiteboard, you could make something or print it out, take a screenshot, catch yourself during the day if, if there was a specific emotion. And what could you do to, the, to come to the right side? Now, this is an act of self-love and self-care. This is not about being selfish. This is not about, okay, I, if I do like these things, people are going to listen to me. But if I start, drop everything and start going and uh, uh, calming myself and uh, get engaged in drawing something, etc., I am being selfish. No, if you start becoming better in your mind, you're actually better prepared to contribute to your work as well and to yourself. So it starts with self-care. The same kind of sheet, you could convert it to a team emotion. In my team, clarity is one of the values. What can we do to keep getting clarity as a team? Accountability. So pick up emotions as a theme, in the team, clarity, curiousness, and so forth. And if we are doing something which are not giving us these kind of emotions back or these kind of values back, what can I do to go? What did I do or what do I do to move to the right side? And slowly this becomes a pattern. Now remember, Many times, when we talk about uh, mental well-being and, uh, and 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 big issues of life, because of the minimum amount of vocabulary we use, because of what media shows us outside, we go into big problems. Are we talking about panic? Are we talking about huge anxiety, bipolar syndrome, and so forth? It, yes, we will go into that. But at the beginning stage, remember even COVID. Can we stop by having clean hands, disinfecting, putting the mask on, doing some steps which do not lead you to uh, worse problems of life? Now, will it solve it? No. Will it prevent it? Yes. Will it give you the tools to be better? Yes. Will, you, will it increase your immunity? This depends on how you're making the actions going. This particular webinar is not enough to go deeper into the bigger issues of uh, mental well-being. However, we can go in some of our workshops and so forth. But let's start with clean hands, clean mind. Next steps. I do have, uh, if, if you have a small team, if you're a manager, leader, director, founder, and you want to connect all these things with revenue, salary, you want to measure what you're doing, let us talk. You can book a call with me and uh, let us talk for just 30 minutes let us understand what i bring in what my team brings in what your team is looking for at the least let us have a generic taboo free shame free conversation that makes us feel well and at the end of that conversation let us list down few steps specific to your company that you can go and start implementing start measuring start connecting to but any kind of measurable, especially revenue and productivity, absenteeism and so forth, employee salary and so forth. And you see how can we make the world a better place by working together. But this is something that is really needed to talk about. Thank you for listening and see you in one of the next sessions.